Hi everybody, it is Cindy Ingram from Art Class Curator and I am excited to invite you to join the Resource Library for Art Teachers, which is a membership program dedicated to teaching art appreciation and art history in creative ways that are not boring and that will uh, spark excitement in your students for lifelong learning in the arts. I want you to think about your goals for your students. How do you want art to play a part in their lives in 10 years, in 20 years? Chances are our students are not going to become artists. It doesn't mean we shouldn't teach them how to make art and teach them how to express themselves creatively, but we really want to develop lifelong learners of art and lifelong lovers of art. We want them to go through their lives enriched by their surroundings, to notice beauty, to uh, take delight in art and take delight in the world around them. And through engaging our students in creative discussions about art and interactive activities about art, that art becomes a part of who they are. It becomes ingrained in their psyche and in their well-being, and that will bring joy to their lives from here on out. So looking at a work of art and engaging with it teaches us about life and the human spirit. It connects us with people around the world. It connects us with the past and with the present and with the future. It connects us with someone living their lives across the world. And that will teach us connection and empathy and respect. Uh, looking at works of art helps us understand ourselves better as well. I know when I look at a work of art, I connect it with who I am and where I'm at in my life. And there have been artwork that have made me think about the world in a new way and make me think about my goals in a new way, my future in a new way. And if one of them even changed the whole course of my career, that we can make these connections with art that teach us about ourselves. Looking at works of art also teaches us to be aware of our surroundings and to notice things that we might not have noticed before. If you think about our students and they're bombarded with visual stimuli all day long, they have Snapchat, and our students must learn to decipher this imagery. So slowing down and really focusing on an image can teach our students how to do this in their real lives as well. So that's my case for including more art history and art appreciation into your classroom. And you might be thinking, how can I do that? I don't have the time to gather those resources, to find those images, to research the art, to come up with my discussion questions and activities. That's too much work. You're already doing a lot of work and that's one more thing to add onto your plate. And that is where the resource library for art teachers comes in. I started teaching over 10 years ago. My first classroom was a college classroom. I had been teaching in museums and in nonprofits up until that point, and I started teaching community college art appreciation. I wanted to teach art appreciation the same way I had taught in the museum, through interactive discussion and fun activities that connect with artworks. But when I went online to find resources, I found nothing. I could find some PowerPoints for some art movements and some topics, but they had a lot of text on them. They were very lecture based. I could find lecture notes. If there was any information out there on an artwork at all, it was not that interesting. There wasn't a lot of interpretation on the internet and ways to dive into these topics uh, deeper. Lecture for art history and art appreciation is just not fun. When I tell people that I teach art history, they're like, oh, that's boring. And it's not boring at all. You, you can teach art history in a way that is fun and engaging, that where the students create that knowledge for themselves and they, they look at the art and discover it and they write about art and they think about art and they, they play with art. And that is really exciting. So back in 2007, in my first college class that I was teaching, I spent countless sleepless nights and weekends full of making lessons and thinking about how to teach Renaissance art in a way that's not luxury, how to review art history material in fun ways, how to make students develop and create the information and the knowledge in their brain for themselves rather than me just telling them and them writing it down. So that semester I created a core group of lessons that I have taken and I've honed and I've perfected over the last 10 years and over multiple grade levels. These lessons that I have spent the last 10 years developing are now available in the resource library for art teachers. One of the examples of a lesson that you will see in the resource library is that students create a television commercial 
uh, skit based on a review of ancient art. So they have to take what they learned about prehistoric art or Mesopotamian art or ancient Egyptian art, and they have to create a product and develop a a uh, quick skit to perform to the class or even make a video if you'd like to do that, summarizing some of the key points in art in a creative way. One example that my students created was a funeral service company based in ancient Egypt. Another one was Nefertiti's makeup and uh, fertility services based on Venus of Willendorf. So they're using their knowledge and then coming up with something new. And that is the definition of critical thinking. Um, another example of a lesson you'll find in the resource library is looking at the very first exhibit of Impressionist art. And that was a groundbreaking exhibit. All of these artists were rejected from the Paris Salon and they created their own exhibit, the Salon of the Rejects. And the students look at examples of artwork from that exhibit. They make a list of the common conventions and characteristics of the art that they see. And then they think about what it would have been like to see this art for the first time if you were sort of a more academic painter. So they come up with their own reactions of how they how they predict people would have reacted. And then they read actual primary source material uh, reviews of the exhibit. So they make predictions and then they verify those through reviews. And we have both positive and negative reviews of the art in there. Um, there's a lot of compare and contrast activities. I love teaching art with compare and contrast. So these lessons are full of interactive activities to get your students thinking and to make you excited about teaching as well. So with your membership in the Resource Library for Art Teachers, you get all of these lessons immediately upon joining. PowerPoints, worksheets, um, student instruction sheets for assignments. In addition to all of those resources to use in your classroom, we also have monthly online trainings in a online classroom where we talk about different topics about teaching art. So we've had sessions on how to look at art with kids, how to teach art history, how to organize art history, how to teach about aesthetics, how to use compare and contrast. Uh, we've talked about assessment and we have those workshops one or two times per month and recordings of those trainings are available in the resource library after they are live so you can watch them at your own schedule. And that's not all. We also have a private Facebook group for members of the resource library and you also receive a monthly bundle of materials for an artwork of the week discussion in your classroom. And this bundle includes one artwork per week and you get a PowerPoint with the artwork, you get discussion questions for that artwork, you get an interactive activity related to that artwork. So maybe they're writing a poem about it, maybe they're doing a jigsaw where they take it apart and they analyze different pieces. Really the possibilities are endless and, and everything you need to do that activity is available in this bundle. So if you need a worksheet to create a poem about the artwork, that worksheet is available in the bundle as well. And then links to extra resources, project extensions and stuff like that is all available in in the artwork of the week bundle that you receive every month. This is a growing and thriving space. There are new resources added regularly, new trainings added every few weeks, and it really is um, an exciting and engaging community of art teachers and, and people who are passionate about incorporating more artworks into their curriculum. Thank you so much for your interest in the Resource Library for Art Teachers. I am happy to help in any way that I can. You can reach out at cindy at artclasscurator.com if you have any questions uh, to make sure that this really is a right fit for you. And um, again, thank you so much. I look forward to working with you and I look forward to more years of creating um, exciting and engaging resources for you.